Hey friends, Monaco here. Last video in our bonding unit, intermolecular forces. So intermolecular forces are kind of important um, when we're talking about things like melting points and boiling points of compounds. And you're going to have to understand the basics of the three that might be on um, unit exams or in our practice. Okay? There's three types. One's very important, one's moderately important, and another is not so important as we'll get to it. So what's important about intermolecular forces? They're not bonds, first of all, but they help explain why some chemical compounds behave differently than others. IMFs are actually very important to all types of life on this planet. For example, it's holding our DNA together. An intermolecular force is holding the strands of our DNA together so it doesn't fall apart. And obviously, if our DNA fell apart, we couldn't be who we are. So that's pretty important. I don't know about you. What do you think? Now, hydrogen bonds also allow frozen water to float. It's why frozen water or ice has a lower density than liquid water. And if you think about that, that's kind of important because if all the ponds and lakes and streams froze over in the winter and the ice fell to the bottom, all the plants and animals that were living in that pond, liver, river, lake, ocean, stream would get crushed and killed. And they believe that life on this planet evolved out of the water. So it's kind of important that ice floats because otherwise all the life on this planet would have gotten crushed before it even got off the ground. Now, dipole forces allow for solubility and solutions to exist. Dipole forces explain why um, sugar dissolves in water okay, and why... Uh, oil does not. Okay, it's just kind of like some descriptions of solutions. Why your um, Kool-Aid flavor squirts will dissolve in the water and make a nice, tasty beverage. So, of the intermolecular forces that we're going to be talking about, the most important are the hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding causes compounds to have high boiling points. Okay, and dipole-dipole uh, -dipole occurs between two polar molecules. This is what's causing things to be soluble or not soluble. The London dispersion forces and the dipole-ion interaction, we're not going to very talk, talk about those too much. London dispersions are very weak and therefore very not important. So intermolecular forces, AKA IMFs, only covalent molecules have them. Never, ever, ever ionic compounds. They're weak forces, relatively, that act between molecules. It holds the molecules to each other. It's like this magnetic stickiness that causes the molecules want to be together or not, depending on how strong the IMF is. They only exist in gases and liquid states. Solids don't really have IMFs that are measurable. Okay, um, They're called weak forces because they're much weaker than a chemical bond. So it's easy to break an intermolecular force without putting much energy into it. So remember, if an IMF occur between molecules, bonding occurs within molecules. So it's literally like internet versus intranet. Inside the net versus outside the net. So in here, we have a covalent bond that's inside the molecule. This is HCl. This is stomach acid. Okay. Uh, here, we have an intermolecular force. It's weak. So you see this is molecule number one and molecule number two. They're covalent molecules, so they can have an intermolecular attraction. Um, hydrogen chloride is a gas that we often dissolve in water, and it's in your stomach. It's an acid. It helps digest your food. So your stomach acid has a intermolecular interaction with other stomach acid molecules, and probably some of the molecules in your food do, which is why it helps to break it down. Just remember, IMFs are not actually bonds. They are kind of like relationships between two, com, uh, two molecules. The first part, the London dispersion forces, are not very important. They're the weakest of all the intermolecular forces. Only important for the nonpolar molecules, things like, oh, I don't know, hydrogen, oxygen, you know, stuff like that, nonpolar molecules. Basically, what it means is more electrons make greater London dispersion forces. You're probably not going to run into this stuff very often and I'm not looking for it as an explanation, really. Dipole-dipole interactions are a little bit more common. These are the reasons why things dissolve in water. HCl have a dipole-dipole, positive and negative ends or poles. So polar molecules can have a dipole-dipole interaction. So just remember back, is this molecule symmetrical? Yes or no. If it is not symmetrical, then it is polar. And it would probably have a dipole-dipole interaction. The word pole is right in there, okay? So don't forget it. 
dipole-dipole, two molecules with permanent dipoles are attracted to one another temporarily. These types of attractions are like passings in the hallway. Hey, you want to hang out with you for a second? Hey, what's up? How's it going? Okay, see you later. I got to go. All right, these are not compounds that are physically getting contact, uh, connected to each other permanently. We call a dipole moment the measure of strength of the dipole of the molecule. So some things have a stronger dipole moment, some things have a weaker dipole moment, but that detail is not so much uh, important in our studies here. I do want to show you a dipole-dipole interaction, though. So I found a nice animation. This is a dipole-dipole interaction that we're going to see. So I'm going to repeat it. These two molecules passing each other in the hall. Hey, it might be hydrogen chloride. And they kind of get close to each other. And one molecule, they've got those positive and negative ends, the partial positive, partial negative, because they're asymmetrical molecules. And click, see what happens here. When they get close enough, they kind of arrange and orient themselves to be like each other. So the positive end of one molecule is attracted to the negative end of another molecule, kind of like magnets would are, are attracted to each other, and you can keep them from actually touching. So that's kind of what the dipole-dipole attraction is like, if you need to think about it like that. Doo -doo -doo. Now, hydrogen bonds, these are like the super-duper most important part, and they are basically dipole-dipoles on steroids. Okay, it's a specific type of a dipole interaction. In a polar bond, hydrogen is basically reduced to a bare proton with almost no atomic radius. So it's the strongest of all IMFs by far. It only occurs in molecules containing hydrogen and fluorine and oxygen and sometimes nitrogen. Now, I have an animation of this as well. So let's see. Do, 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 do. So the hydrogen bonding. It's like the dipole-dipole in that two molecules get close to each other first, and then the positive end and the negative end of the molecule orient themselves. So the positive end of the molecule is attracted to the negative end of the other molecule. And since this is H2O, the oxygen being the big red sphere and the hydrogen being little green spheres, that is possible because it's a, one of those elements that hydrogen bonding can occur in. Hydrogen, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. It only happens when hydrogen is bonded to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. All the other type of instance, it would be a dipole-dipole interaction. That's what we would call it. So at this point, you should have a basic understanding of intermolecular forces, how it's like a force of attraction between two molecules, but it's not actually a bond. And hydrogen bonding is very important. It's the strongest of the forces. Dipole-dipole bonding or interaction is moderately important. It explains why things are soluble. And London dispersion forces are the least important. So I rank these in strength, too. One, two, three. And importance, their strength is their importance. So thanks for watching. I hope you understand a little bit more about intermolecular forces.